Hey folks, my name is Spencer Smith and I'm an engineer at Talos Systems. I uh, wanted to talk to you a little bit about one of the features that we've got coming up in Talos 0.7 that I'm pretty excited about. Uh, and that's our ISO support. And ISO support makes it really easy for us to get Talos installed really just about anywhere. And uh, so I wanted to guide you through uh, doing that in Proxmox today. So Proxmox is a virtual machine kind of management system that feels like, you know, we've seen a lot of home use, home lab use. Uh, and so we wanted to make sure that Talos worked pretty well there. Um, so let's go ahead and get that created and uh, we'll show you how to do it. So first things first, uh, you want to head out to our GitHub repo. Uh, Talos Systems is the org. Talos is the repo. And go to releases. You'll see that we have a new beta release out as of today. And that beta release has a bunch of assets. Um, the one we're mainly concerned about is Talos AMD64.ISO. So I'll go ahead and pull that down. Um, and if you don't already have it, you'll probably want Talos CTL as well for your architecture. So go ahead and grab that if you don't already have it installed. Um, and so out here in Proxmox, I've already got it uploaded, this ISO. I've done this before, but I'll show you what's up. Um, you'll just go upload ISO image, select file, and you'll select that ISO image that we just downloaded. Um, and that will get pushed up. It shouldn't take too long. You know, for me, it took a few seconds just because it was, you know, the, it's right next to my desk, so it was very fast. Um, ISO is uploaded. Let's go ahead and start creating some VMs. So we'll create the first VM that we'll use as our uh, single node control plane for this example. Um, we'll call it Talos Proxmox, if I can spell, uh, zero. And OS, we will select the ISO image that we uploaded. And then system will leave as defaults. Hard disk, I'm gonna lower a little bit uh, just because this is a, a pretty small machine that I'm working with. Uh, two cores, two gigs of RAM. The network I'm gonna keep the same. It's gonna come up on the bridge interface, uh, which for me is perfect. Um, I've got a, a home lab kind of subnet set up on you know, my home network, and it's just gonna come up just like any other device on that, on that subnet, so that's perfect for me. Um, we'll say confirm, and we'll say finish. So that has been created, and we'll go out here and start it up. Um, what's gonna happen is we're gonna boot that ISO, and then in just a second, we will get to what we're calling maintenance mode in Talos. And maintenance mode is essentially this, this kind of mode where, you know, we're not really sure what we wanna do with this Talos node yet, maybe, or, or we don't have a config to work with. So we boot this ISO, and we're gonna generate the config on the fly and push it in. So we will wait for maintenance mode here, and then we'll do a Talos CTL gen config. So, we're up maintenance mode, and you can see that it tells us the machine is reachable at this IP address, uh, 192.168.254.24. So let's go ahead and generate a config for that. Um, so I'm gonna do a Talos CTL gen config. I'm gonna give it a cluster name of Talos Proxmox, and I am going to tweak this IP address to be the dot 24, and that's gonna be my control plane endpoint. And then I'm gonna put a dash O flag for an output directory, which I, because I wanna store these locally and be able to tweak them and use them. Um, so we'll go ahead and generate that. That'll give us an init.yaml, a control plane yaml, join.yaml, and a Talos config. Um, these two, as you might guess, are for control plane nodes in Talos. Uh, the join.yaml is for adding workers. And then the Talos config itself is the config file you use for Talos CTL to talk to a Talos node. Um, so I'll show you a little bit about what our configs look like. So this is the init.yaml that we just generated, uh, Proxmox configs init.yaml. And it looks pretty verbose, but that's by design. So one of our engineers, Artem, did some awesome work in 07 uh, to add lots and lots of comments around our machine config uh, to really explain deeply what everything does and make it really easy to tweak values and, and customize them for your own infrastructure. Um, the good news is, is that we don't have to change anything for this example. Um, so it should just work for us and we will be able to profit. So we're gonna take this init.yaml and we're gonna push it into that uh, VM that we just created. So we'll do a Talos CTL apply dash config. Uh, we'll do a dash E for endpoint, 192.168.254.24, dash N for node, 192.168.254.24. Um, and those are kind of Talos CTL isms, and we'll actually tweak those values and with our Talos config here in a little bit. Uh, I'm just manually specifying them now. 
um, but we will add those with TLSCTL2 our config here in just a sec. So endpoint and node, um, I'm going to pass an insecure flag um, because you know this is maintenance mode and it came up without a machine config. It has no keys. It has no way to secure itself. Um, so we have to tell it here. You know we're going to talk to you insecurely and we're going to give you a config to upload and install Talos with. Um, so dash f is for file, and then we'll say uh, proxmox configs init.yaml, and that'll get pushed in. So if we head back out to our console, you can kind of see some action here. Uh, it picked up that config that we pushed. It started doing some network changes based on what was in the Talos config or in the uh, machine config. And then now it's off to the races with installing Talos. So while that's happening, it shouldn't really take long. Doing this pull is really the meat of it. But we'll go ahead and boot up another VM that we'll use as our worker node. Uh, so we'll call this one Talos Proxmox 1. And it's going to be the same old story here. Uh, select the Talos ISO, default for system, tweak the hard disk, uh, tweak the CPU, and we're good. So we'll say finish on that. Um, we can see that on our first VM that Talos is already installed and it's rebooting and it's running through the installation of Kubernetes, or not quite, almost. Um, it's creating the Talos services and now it's running, yeah, API D, so the Talos API is up. Uh, we're very close to running boot cube and getting Kubernetes installed. So uh, that's all cool. Um, on this worker node, we'll go ahead and fire him up too. And we will let it do, kind of reach that same point uh, in the ISO and we will inject a join config for this one. So let's wait on this to boot up and we'll do another Talos CTL apply config uh, based on whatever IP address we've got here. And then we will be ready to roll. <clears throat> Okay, so this one did get a dot twenty five. You never know, but uh, we'll go ahead and inject a join config there. So I'll update these endpoints and nodes. Still the insecure flag and the file instead of init.yaml will be join.yaml, and then we'll just simply apply that. And so kind of the same story. Uh, gets the new config and it reboots after installing Talos. Um, so let's head back out to our control plane, and we can see that boot cube is already run. Kubelet's up. Uh, we should be ready to roll here. So let's get Talus CTL configured and we will talk to it. Uh, we'll talk to the Kubernetes API. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to export um, my Talus config environment variable uh, to be the path to that local Talus config, just to make things a little easier. And then I'm going to do a Talus CTL config endpoint and I'm going to give it that first control plane node. 192, 168, 254, uh, 24 endpoint. Not point. And then same for config nodes. And so, you know, you can do, you can add multiple nodes, you can add multiple endpoints. TeleCTL is really cool like that, but we're really only worried about this one control plane node for now. Um, now that we have that, we should be able to do something like TeleCTL D message. Yep, there's all our D message logs from that node. And then now we can do a TeleCTL cube config, a local path, and a dash F file flag because I've already got a cube config in this path. I uh, just want to blow it away and overwrite it. <clears throat> and that'll that'll go ahead and generate a cube config for us, put it in the current directory, uh, and then we can use that to talk to the Kubernetes API server. And then once that is uh once that's done, I'll probably go ahead and set the cube config environment variable through my local path. Um, and just use that. So yeah, we'll just do a cube config equals cube config. Um, and then I can do a cube CTL get nodes. And so now we can see um, pretty quickly there. Uh, we've got a we've got our one control plane node, and we've got our one worker node in Proxmox ready to roll. And so that's it. Um, thanks, everyone for your time. Hope this helps. And uh, hope you have fun with Talos.